Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. One of the great ways you can support this show is by not clicking skip ad. When you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Let the ads play all the way through. Open up a separate browser if need be. And if you're a YouTube Red subscriber, I get paid anytime you watch one of my videos. Another great way to support the show is go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. For as little as $5 a month, you get bonus content. Also at the $5 level, you get to submit articles or subjects or topics to talk about. This was submitted by Jasmine Mann. I very much appreciate this. You guys, the thing I love about this show and why I want to hear from you is you make me aware of stuff that I wasn't aware of and then I can make more people aware of it. <clears throat> so Jasmine sent me this topic about reparations. We were talking about this in the Super Chat. I do that every Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, unless otherwise noted. Follow me on social media if I make a change, but usually Sundays, 3 p.m. Pacific. You guys can ask me questions. We talk about stuff. We have great discussions. Several weeks ago, it was brought up about reparations because that has come up in the campaign. And initially, I said, you know, I don't know that much about the specifics. My concern with it is it is something that is going to just be used to divide people um, because Fox News, the right wing will automatically just say, oh, you know, black people just want free checks or whatever, you know, that like awful welfare mom <laughs> racist tack that they used pretty heavily in the 80s with uh, George Bush um, and Reagan. So Jasmine sent me some bunch of information. The thing I like about the show, I... I understand it more now and I want to explain it to you. It's, it's not just like people want free checks. There's a, there's a law, a, 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 well, a, a proposal, HR 40, and one of the things that's in it, and I'll go into the details, is setting up a committee to find out who actually is what they're calling ADOS, American Descendants of Slaves. So no, anyone can't just go, oh, I, 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 I'm a slave, I'm one one hundredth. So I should get money. It's more about that. It's not, it's, it's, excuse me, it's not about that. It's more about um, first identifying who would actually qualify and then the institutionalized disparities that American descendants of slaves still experience today and what we can do to eliminate those. And by eliminating those, and I'm going to show you in this, it actually, it's going to make everything better for society. It's like Nina Turner talked about this. She said, if we help the black community, it's better for everybody. The right tries to paint it like, okay, poor whites, you're going to get pushed aside for the, and that's not, that's not what this is. Um, so one of the things to go into first is this graph here, the way racial wealth inequality is rampant in the United States. Now this was taken, I think, around 2011. So the blue line is white, uh, red is black, and Latino is orange. So here's since 83. Here's uh, median household wealth from whites. Peaked out here, 161,000, all right? That was in the middle of the uh, Clinton. So here's 2008. Here's when everything bottomed out. But look at this. And projected, so this is 10,400, 10,200 for Latinos. All of this, and I've done videos on this before, Obama wiped out wealth in the black and Latino communities. Wiped it out. The 5.2 million foreclosures hurt a lot of people. Hurt me. I lost my home. But many people in the black and Latino communities got wiped out. And one of the things Jasmine said to me in the email, she's like, Graham, there's a lot of us younger uh, black people who are just like, we saw what Obama did and it was bullshit. And this is a big, uh, a big point for us in the mainstream media is, of course, not explaining it fully. Weird. I, I know that that shocked me. The mainstream media is usually so on point. It's shocking. So look at this disparity, even projected to 2020 and 2024. Look at this. 122,600. This is from Forbes. So I went to the website. She gave me the uh, the website and I'll put the link that, that, and I took some of the sort of the highlights of what the platform of reparations and HR 40 are to give you an idea. And really in reading it, I was like, wow, these are, this, this makes sense. This isn't just handing out checks to people. <laughs> of course, that's never, 
Yeah, it's like Obamacare is going to kill your grandmother. They just boil it down to some thing because it's, it's ridiculous. And again, as we talk about in the MMT videos, and also, well, how are we going to pay for it? Well, what we, what we know about MMT and also just we never ask that question about war. <laughs> we never ask how we're going to pay for war. How we're going to set culture, you know, poor brown people on fire in the Middle East and destroy their cultures. We don't ask how much that's going to cost. So why do we always ask how much it's going to help people? Anytime we want to do something good, we're oh boy, that'll cost too much. I can come, you know, throw a grenade in your house and set it on fire. Who cares how much that costs? But helping you? Oh boy, who's got the time for that? So here's from the, the website. Um, we need set-asides for American descendants of slavery, not minorities. A throwaway category which includes all groups except white men. That categorization has allowed Democrats to use programs like affirmative action as giveaways to all groups in exchange for votes. The bigotry, excuse me, the bribery must end. That begins with a new designation on the census with ADOS and another for black immigrants. Black immigrants should be barred from accessing affirmative action and other set-asides intended for ADOS, as should Asians, Latinos, white women, and other minority groups. But nobody suffered more than Hillary Clinton. Come on. That's not fair. Look what that girl said about Chelsea. Chelsea Clinton, you know, gets paid $100 million to run her parents' foundation. Anyway, they've suffered, the Clintons. Um, in addition, ADOS hiring and employment data must be demanded for all businesses receiving tax credits, incentives, and governmental support, as well as all governmental agencies, national, state, and local. It is our belief that this will show that there is no, there are minimal, if any, ADOS professionals in fields including, but not limited, engineering, medical, legal, and tech. That's a great point, and this goes into a lot of detail of how, like, the high-end white-collar jobs American descendants of slavery, like in the tech, Silicon Valley, they're not hired. As it says here, black immigrants are hired, but they're like, that's not, that's, that's not, <laughs> that's not the same thing. We're talking American descendants of slavery. Your great grandparents or great great grandparents were brought here as slaves. And since that time, generation after generation, there has been institutions in place to hold them back. We're going to get into in a second. There's a, they want prison reform, which I am so, I so on board with. See, this makes sense, too, when you get into this categorization. First of all, this is something, too, the Democratic Party just takes the black vote for, for granted. Hillary Clinton did that, and that's why she, one of the reasons she lost. And then this, just affirmative action giveaways to all groups, and this then further alienates working class whites, which then the Republicans scoop up, by promising them, like both parties hate working class people. Make no two ways about it. The Republicans are just better at masking it. This is a very specific thing. Because in the tech industry, American descendants of slaves aren't getting jobs. And that's what they're, that's what they're saying here. There are minimal, if any, ADOS professionals in these fields, medical, legal, and tech. Here's another statistic I was not aware of. Black businesses only relieve, received 1.7% of the 23.09 billion in total SBA loans under President Obama, SBA Small Business Administrations. After having previously received 8.2 under President Bush. Look at that. One, only Obama 1.7? Bush did better giving small business loans to black businesses. And again, people were shocked that 2016 was the lowest black voter turnout. The first ever black president, how did he help? I said, it's just the diversity of the ruling class. The ruling class said, here, you guy, you get to run because we know you'll just take us from two wars to seven. You'll make profits off the war machine. You'll help five, the banks create 5.2 million foreclosures, not prosecute any of them. Pipelines. 
Succeeding as an entrepreneur requires capital, so our agenda demands that 15% of SBA loans be distributed to ADOS businesses. This is such a fair thing to ask for. Not a handout, but a business loan. I could benefit from a small business loan. I understand the biggest problem in a, starting a business, any business, is capital, is money, right? I even know young entrepreneurs that have, made, that have products that are in the marketplace and then there's this whole thing. I just spoke at this thing for um, Farm Friendly like, uh, that helps entrepreneurs with um, healthy food products, very clean, clean ingredients, meaning no, no sugar, no fill, none of that stuff. Anyway, and one of the things my friend was explaining to me is like, well, they got to spend all these wholesale costs. Then they sell it to the distributors. The distributors have anywhere from a net 60 to next 90. So they have up to three months to pay. The distributors are out. We're, we've sold all of your product, which, you, which is a good thing. But you then business owner, I'm out of money. I'm, I'm waiting for up to three months to get my cash back from the distributor. They're asking for more products. So I need cash to buy more wholesale to get more in the marketplace. I don't have the money. A small business loan helps. And 15% of small business loan be distributed to ADOS businesses. So again, you have, they would have to go through this process of being verified that they're, in, that they're ADOS and in ADOS businesses and only asking for 15% of the loans. Not give us free money, a loan you gotta pay back with interest and if you default on the loan, you suffer the bad credit and all the stuff that happens with anybody getting a loan. Obama did 1.7%. This is good, by the way. This is good. Giving any small business loans, government-backed loans, low-interest loans, small businesses help the whole economy. If all these 15%, then you're putting a lot of people to work. A lot of people that can't seem to get hired in the tech industry. You're lifting up an entire community when you infuse this much into it. Imagine these black communities that have been lost jobs and all the other stuff that any community has had to deal with in this country. This helps. Imagine if this 15% went to Detroit. What would Detroit look like? Instead, it's been abandoned. We seek a multi-billion dollar infrastructure plan targeting the ADOS communities, including but not limited to the Black Belt, Flint, Michigan. A Reuters examination published in 2016 found that 3,000 cities with poisoning rates higher than Flint still have contaminated water in Flint. Multi-billion dollar infrastructure plan? That's good for everybody. That puts a lot of people to work. This could be incorporated as part of the Green New Deal. This isn't a handout. This is helping people. As I've said before, you help out the poorest, regardless of ethnicity, and there's less crime then, which is better for all of us. Wouldn't you want to live in a country that had little to no crime rate because everyone has got a good job and everyone's got good schooling and everyone's got free health care? Wouldn't that be a good thing? This is part of that. This can, part, this can help that. And also too, America, look, we just have to own the fact that we were created out of genocide and slavery. The genocide of the Native Americans, the genocide and slavery of, of African Americans. We have, to, we have to own that. Not push it aside, not you know, put a bumper sticker on it, but this, is, this, this would make me feel like, okay, good. And anyone can't just get this. And as you're talking about business loans and infrastructure, it's, it's, this is a positive plan. This isn't just free handouts, as I'm sure Sean Hannity's calling it. This is another key one. Mass incarceration has wreaked havoc on black American families. By some accounts, there are literally more black males imprisoned than all women are incarcerated on the planet. <laughs> to give context, there are 20 million black males 
and they largely descend from slavery. While there are 4 billion women globally, both groups producing the same number of incarcerated. That is horrifying. The invention of slavery through the use of the 13th Amendment is chronicled by Douglas Blackman in the PBS documentary, Slavery by Another Name. I have not seen this documentary, but I would say watch this one or watch the documentary that came out last year, 13th. That is a great documentary. I can't say, I, this is probably good too. I'm just saying I saw 13th, it's great. It got an Oscar nomination and really opened my eyes up to how this has been institutional, intergenerational slavery. Ron Placone and I were just in Mississippi on the Progressive Comedy Tour and we saw inmates with MDOC, Mississippi Department of Corrections, doing construction work. That's how they get their labor to fix the roads in Mississippi. So if they're getting cheap labor, that means they need to create criminals. The private prison industry, this is awful. And what, what, how the 13th Amendment has basically legalized slavery and put an inordinate amount of black men behind bars, that needs to be fixed. And again, that's good for all of society. Now I know the right's gonna be like, they're just gonna let convicts run free. Yeah, Willie Horton, I've heard that bullshit. Um, is our position this must be corrected? We demand an immediate assessment of the numbers of the ADOS prison population in the state and federal level. We also demand that there be review if punishment, bail amount, sentence lengths, amount of time served before parole is being levied at unfairly high levels. <laughs> I can almost assure you it is. A white kid and a black kid get busted for weed. The black kid is three times more likely to go to jail. For weed, for a plant. And that's the other thing too. I mean, look at this. What Manafort got what, who, these, these horrifying criminals commit awful acts and they get slaps on the wrist. <laughs> and here's what you do, you review it. And if you find out that it was unfairly leveled at a high level, huh, just make it commensurate. This guy got 15, this guy got seven. Eh, bring it down to seven then. <laughs> Let's make it fair. Committed a crime, got to commit the crime. Somebody commits the crime, they got to they gotta own it. But they don't get higher sentences just because of the color of their skin. That's bullshit. We demand there to be real prison reform in the form of investment into counseling, job training, and rehabilitation for our incarcerated. Again, that helps all of America. Because guess what we have now? Prisons are criminal college. Very little rehabilitation is happening. Some states and some prisons have certain programs, but those have all gone away. We've got to, and because the private prison industry, of course, needs prisoners. Because if you get out of jail, there's a comic I know that was an ex-con. He got busted for dealing drugs. <laughs> he goes, Graham, I got out of jail. I couldn't get a regular job. I can't vote. I got into comedy because the only other choice was to go back into the life or make $9 an hour flipping burgers, which I can't feed myself on. Recidivism is not good for our society. I know people that go into to, to prison and come out worse. Don't we want to make America better? Don't we want the idea of America is perfect. The Bill of Rights and the Constitution, they're perfect. The Constitution is a breathable document. That's what makes it so great. It can change. AR-40 commissioned to study and develop uh, reparation proposals for African Americans Act. The bill establishes the commission to study and develop reparation proposals for African Americans to examine slavery and discrimination in the colonies in the United States from 1619 to the present and recommend appropriate remedies. Some of them are listed. Because guess what happens if we don't? Miami Color of Wealth report shows staggering gap in liquid wealth. Native blacks worth $11 an hour. Caribbean's worth $2,000. And that Miami is just one sampling. This is from Electronic Urban Report. 
but if this is happening in Miami, you can you can bet it's pretty pretty accurate. And this is what Jasmine said to me in her email. Uh, As the most faithful bloating block to the Democrats, young black people are now fed up with the Clinton-run party that has put their concerns on the back burner for 25 years. The real advocates, Tone Talks, Breaking Brown, are standing up not because they are Russian bots or have an anti-Bernie Sanders vendetta, but because they are reaching a breaking point and need serious change before black wealth goes to zero in 2053. And this is, of course, study predicts huge and growing gulf between white U.S. households and everyone else could be disastrous in the future of the American middle class. So thank you, Jasmine. I see there's way more to reparations than I initially thought. And now, of course, I see that the damn mainstream media wants it to look like this. Look, I'm all for it, but you can't just everyone will lose their shit. No, these are good things for everybody. Fixing the infrastructure of not just the black community, but all of America. Again, that's part of the Green New Deal that puts everyone to work. This is the right thing to do. It's humane, it's compassionate, and it's good for everybody. Nina, as I said, Nina Turner said it. She goes, if we help the black community, then we help everything. So thanks for for letting me know. I love the show. I love the stuff you guys send me. I love when you open my eyes to something that I wasn't really aware of, or you bring me more information about something. And now everyone gets more information. All the links are in the show notes, guys. Like, subscribe, share the videos, get the word out. Because the more this channel grows, the more I can do stories like this and cover it in a way that the mainstream media is not. I'm just one guy in a rent control department because the Republicans and Democrats let the banks take my fucking home. I don't have a research team. You guys are my research team. You're all political vigilantes. Shave your knuckles for justice and make Gotham great again.